Thank you for joining me on another Hey Hey It's a Monkeys review. And I'm doing this because the monkeys are an obsession of mine, and plus at the end of this month, April 29th, we are getting the big Blu-ray box set that will feature Season 1 and Season 2 of the monkeys, all beautifully restored. If any of you monkey fans out there have seen the restoration demonstration done by Rhino, as well as in the box set another a new version of Head. The good thing about Head is that it will have deleted scenes. Now, I have to make a correction on my last video. I said it was supposed to come out in April. I had meant February. It was originally announced in February, from what I remember, and then they pushed it to April 29th. So hopefully they don't push it again. I don't think they will, uh, especially, uh, but uh, I can't wait for that. Today we're going to talk about the monkey's film, Head, and the Rhino 3-disc deluxe edition box set that came out in 2010, and the Criterion Collection Blu-ray that originally was in this 2010 um, box set, America Lost and Found, the BBS story. And it's important, if uh, this is a good box set if you're a film fanatic to get anyways, because it has a lot of the major films that were a part of BBS, with the exception of the documentary Hearts and Minds, which Criterion had already released. For the casual monkey fan out there, I mean, monkey fans, you know this story. If you want to fast forward this, you certainly can. But Head was their first film, and only film. And if you haven't seen the film, it is a trip. I first saw it in 1986, when it finally came out on videotape, but I owned the soundtrack first. I think I saw the movie December of 86, but I had the soundtrack. I got it in August of 86. The movie is a, was co-written and co-produced by Jack Nicholson. Yes, the Jack Nicholson. He and Bob Rafelson developed a relationship, and of course it, they went on, he went on to star in a number of films directed by Bob Rafelson, Five Easy Pieces and King of Marvin Gardens among them. It's two of his best performances, in my opinion. But Rafe, uh, Nicholson wanted to get into writing, and, and Rafelson wanted to get into directing. Part of the reason why the Monkees show was created was so they could, Rafelson could make films. And the co-executive producer and creator show, Bert Schneider, could be a producer. How convenient. And the film head was written by Jack Nicholson and, and Rafelson with contributions from all four monkeys. The story goes that they all basically had a meeting of what they didn't want for a monkeys movie. In particular with Peter Tork and Mickey Dolenz, they did not want to do a 90-minute retread of the television show. It would have been easy to do. Dave Davey has said, and even in the audio commentary he, on the Criterion Edition, it has said that he felt that they should have done a movie like Ghostbusters. Now, I don't know if he was saying that retrospectively, Mike Nesmith, sometimes he... I, I, I love the guy. Believe me, I love the guy. But... His audio commentary is pretty much like, I really didn't know what was going on. And it, but anyways, they had all gotten together with Nicholson and Rafelson, and they had a meeting, a several-day meeting, at a golf resort in Ojai, California, where they all got stoned and pretty much talked into a tape recorder. And N Nicholson took the tapes from the meeting, and he and Rafelson wrote the script based around those tapes. And basically what you have in the film is nothing like the television show. It is a... V uh, and at first when I saw the film, I thought it was cool. I thought it was psychedelic. Uh, I knew there was no plot, but that didn't matter to me. The film was a visual feast. But I started to get it when I, when I read Davy Jones' book, They Made a Monkey Out of Me. And I also read Eric 
Lifkowitz's book, A Monkey's Tale. And that's when I got it. And me and a monkey's friend at the time were having these in intelligent discussions of what represented. Basically, the film is a deconstruction of the monkeys and the monkeys myth done very abstract I mean very abstract when you first see the film you will think there's no there's no story there really is no story but there is a theme going throughout you can almost say if I can compare it to anything in modern day imagine the Truman Show on acid a lot of interpretations I've read, and the one interpretation that I've read of the film that kind of makes sense is the movie is about four individuals trying to get out of a fictitious situation, and they can't. That's a theme of the film. They keep getting trapped in a black box. I didn't know the monkeys had made a film. Now, in 86, you had the monkeys hype everywhere. MTV started to rerun their show, and that coincided, rather coincidentally, with the, co the release of the compilation, The Best of the Monkeys, That Was Then, This Is Now. Um, uh, edited version of it on vinyl, a lot more songs on the CD. And Rhino Records, at the time the reissue Kings, decided to reissue their catalog on vinyl and cassette. So I went to Musicland, you know, high on the monkeys, watching the reruns on MTV and also on syndication, channel 60 in Chicago, you know those UHF channels, you remember those? Uh, for people that are my age, uh, we grew up with those. And on, I kept on looking through the monkeys albums and there were, on the hype sticker on the front had a list of the monkeys albums that, that Rhino had, had reissued. And one of them had an intriguing title that said head. And I finally got to it, and I saw this cover. This is the 2011 180-gram reissue of it. But then I turned to the back cover, and I saw this. An original motion picture soundtrack. And I looked at the cast. I'm like, hmm. First off, this picture just kind of intrigued me. I looked at some of the song titles. Opening Ceremony, Suplicio, Gravy. I'm like, what the heck is this? And once I found out that it was a movie, I wanted to know what the movie was about. What's this movie? When I got the album, I was shocked. I kept flipping it over. Once it, one side was done, I got side two. Then I flipped it back over, went back to side one, side two. Flipped it back over. Um, I loved it. I loved it, and I still love it. The album is a masterpiece. Uh, somehow, Jack Nicholson himself coordinated the soundtrack. With the movie and the album together, uh, it, it's the closest the Monkees came to a concept album. And I had this album before my friends did, before, again, for people that, that were watching the Monkees show on television, on MTV and syndication, who didn't even know they made a movie. You know, I was the one saying, hey, they made a movie, and you need to hear this album. Basically, if you haven't heard the album, it is a continuous sound collage uh, featuring the six songs from the movie with sound effects and dialogue from the film in between those tracks, and everything is segued together. There's no gaps between the songs. It is a trip. The Rhino box set is really good. Um, this is what it looks like when you open it. Recreation of the poster. You get a booklet with extensive liner notes and session notes. You get a 45 RPM single of the instrumental backing track to Porpoise Song and As We Go Along recreated to look like the original single picture sleeve. I wish they would have just gone and done a, a reissue of the actual song, but you know, the beggars can't be choosers. And you get three discs again. You get the album plus some. Uh, again, a recreation of that album. And a, a bonus disc of rarities again and mono mixes. This has the Salt Lake City concert on it that 
if you've seen the film, the footage from Circle, uh, the performance of Nesmith Circle Sky was taken from. And you get an open ended radio interview with Davy Jones about the film. And the good thing, the, the fun thing about this, uh, oh, and you get a head button. For those that don't know, this was the original poster in the original ad for the movie. Did not mention the monkeys at all. Or rather, a promotional tool that backfired at the time to not mention the monkeys and just show that guy's face with the words head. Box set, again, Rhino pulls out all the stops. The remastering is, is great. I think they did some slight remixing because on As We Go Along, the, the, the lead guitar melody at the begin and during the intro pans back and forth. And the original vinyl, the original CD did not do that. They made it a limited edition, and my cover is, uh, has got some wear and tear on it, but you can still see the shine. And, again, a limited edition, but they really did a great job in putting this whole thing together. They really did. Um, I'm happy they did that. I'm glad I have it, and I like all of the bonus stuff. Uh, it's got a 29-minute, half-hour track of the sessions to... Uh, Diddy Diego war chant. Hey, hey, we are the monkeys. We know we love to please. A manufactured image with no philosophies. With uh, four monkeys being directed by Nicholson and executive producer Bert Schneider in the control booth. And it's interesting to hear how happy they're doing this at first and then how annoyed they're getting doing take after take. So again, if you're able to get your hands on this, eBay or whatever, get it. The 2011 vinyl reissue from from Rhino get it it's still widely available and head the movie and especially the album is a masterpiece that's my take on the monkeys head project movie and Rhino box set I'm doing the I'm doing them in this order to talk about the box sets and then the final box set was the debut monkeys album that will lead into the famous four so the next one will be 1968's Instant Replay, the first album without Peter and the first that was really haphazardly put together. And I'll be talking about that. So thank you.